Welcome to the Jamodi Podcast, where we interview coaches and leaders to find out not just what they do, but how they do what they do. Becoming the best version of ourselves is Jamodi, just a matter of doing it. Uh, before we do the speed round, which I'm excited to hear your your quick little answers from that, I have one more question for you. So it's summertime. I'm old. I don't, nothing's quick anymore. <laughs> uh, summertime. And, and my high school coach said that play, players are made in the summer. They have so much time to spend on their game and to focus and, and to add things, make improvements. So for what are your off-season expectations for shooters? Like, you know, volume, hours, what, what shots up? You know, what, what, do you, what do you tell players? Shooting things are right. Well, I, I, I don't like the 10,000 shot club. That means 10,000 shots doing the wrong way. Okay, yes, you'll get reach a certain level, but you won't take it to the next. Any time that you're going to take it to the next level, you have to focus on detail. Always. No matter what it is, you want your business to grow, you got to start focusing on the details. Okay? If you want your math to get better, you just look at the details. But whatever it is in life, you got to focus on the details at some point if you want to take it to the next level. So in the off season, letting kids do their own thing, 10,000 shots the wrong way is not smart. Work on the gun with the shooting strap. If you're shooting at what speed, Matt? Game speed. Game speed. That's right. Now I'm getting something done. Now I have a kid coming out after that guy. Okay, two kids, okay? After they're really good. If, if they meet the channel, oh, coach, this is easy. Okay, that's telling you if it becomes easy, then challenge the kids. And if they're real athletes, they'll want to be challenged. A real athlete wants to know how they're doing. The other ones say, well, I hope coach didn't see that. Well, coach, coach. I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I remember when I was uh, with Washington Wizards, I, and it was, uh, oh, I forget the young man's name. It was, it was his rookie year. And I was hired to work with this young man from Serbia. And uh, I wasn't supposed to work with other people, but this one guy, he just kept pulling pulling on my shirt. Coach, look at my shot. Look at my shot. Well, he, kept, he went on to become a great, great scorer for the Wizards. You probably know who that is. He's got, he his, 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 right now he pulled a, uh, he tore his Achilles tendon, and he's, he's trying to make it with a few other Cubs coming back from that and whatnot. But uh, I'm not great with names, but but I, that's the kind of attitude you have to have. Always want to be challenged to a higher level. Mm. And and it, once it becomes easy, um, take it, make it go faster. Like we have kids do ball handling drills uh, around the body and whatnot. Okay, you can do it slow, but let's pick up the speed. And and if you're doing it right you'll start making mistakes when you do ball handling drills. If you're not doing it right, you're doing it too slow. That's right. So always speed it up. Again, the John Wooden principle, faster, faster, so the game slows down. Once you know what you're doing, you can do it. Everything seems to slow down. Well, that was a long, I forgot one answer. But. Yeah, and, and you know what? Just I, I want to be fully transparent on this and and uh, because I could stay quiet right now and just allow your answer to go and, and not – my school, we are literally in the middle of our 10,000 shot, <laughs> 10,000 shot club for the summer, for the spring and summer. And I, and I completely get what you're saying. And, and you're right. I, I'm, you just uh, hope they're doing it the right way. Don't I'm you, probably you? promoting the, I, you know, maybe, maybe I, I'm, I'm, my mindset is, Matt, it's easy. Let's face it. 10,000 shots is easy as a coach. Hey, I'll give you a certificate, the whole thing. It's an easy way to get by. Yeah. Uh, let's be honest. I, I, I did the same thing. Okay. It's an easy thing. I don't have to work with them. I don't have to check their form out. I don't have to do anything. I just say, 10,000 shots, come on. Let me know how you're doing along the way and whatnot. But when you have to have kids reporting in, how they're doing for five in a row, five in a row, same spot, game speed from different spots. Hey, um, oh, I remember this. So this will help you. Uh, I saw this kid downtown. And I, uh, in a small community, you can have downtown, okay? And I says, how's your shot coming? I was like, oh, real good, real good, real good, coach. Real good, real good. And I says, how many can you make in a row from the same spot? Oh, I, I, I don't know, coach. So, where is it? Now, I've, I've got a card. Uh, we, 
maybe I sent you that triangle card where we where we make on uh, uh, making five in a row from the same spot gain speed. That's that's an A. Four in a row out of ten attempts. How many? What's the most you can make in a row out of ten attempts? Four in a row. That's a B level. And then uh, three is a C, and then two and one are obviously C, B, and C and F. You know, but anyway, by giving them a grading level, when I said, how is your shot, coach? How's, how's, your, how's that jump hook coming? Oh, pretty good. No, no. How is your jump hook, coach? I'm at the C level. So now we are both on the same page. In 10 attempts, how many can you make in a row out of 10 attempts? So that way, I could see kids. I could just, I could see my dairy queen. Say, hey, how's your three-pointer coach? Coach, I'm at the A level. I know what that is. They can make five in a row for the same spot at game speed. I know that. We're on the same page without going into how you're doing. How's that game speed coming? Remember, that's a part of it. So now, now I can just use those elements, five in a row, same spot, game speed, uh, game, game position, and game speed. I can use those elements when I do meet them in the 10,000 shot club. Okay. How many shots? When you shoot free throws out of your 10,000 shots, how many can you make in a row? Can you make 10 in a row? And out of those 10 in a row, out of those number in a row, how many are perfect swishers in a row? So now I nail them down in that 10,000 shot club. How many can you make perfect, not, not game speed shot, but free throws? How many can you make that are game, uh, uh, no iron, I call them no iron shots, where they're not touching the left or back. So good that the ball is coming off, so proficient. And how many can you make in a row? So you would only hold them to that standard for free throws, but when you're talking uh, game shots at game, game speed, you're in your five in a row, there's not the swish factor there from o- not, other that, spots. No, that's not a swish factor. Be, again, because you got so many elements going so fast, you just want to make the shot. Yep. Yes, it'd be nice if they swished it, <laughs> but I'm happy it goes in. That's right. In a row, okay? And so you have to give them that element of air. A free throw, you shouldn't have that air. Because remember, you're shooting slow. you got time to look at you can see everything. You don't even look by feel. One of the things we say is find the bell stem. Put these two fingers and straddle the bell stem every time. So put your palm, palm on the cross. Now my hands, I'm literally looking at my hand. Now when I go up to take that free throw, now my, the ball is in the best possible position. So many kids will dribble the ball, they spin the ball, and then they're holding the ball. They're hoping, they're going only by hope that their hand is in the best possible position. Hoping is what you do when you catch a ball, a pass from a teammate, and you catch it, and you hope your hands are in the best position. Free throw, you take the hope out of it and you demand that the hands are in the best possible position. Find the bell stem on the ball, straddle that with those two fingers, and then put on the, every single shot, the same thing. Palm, never touching, never laying on it. That helps you for the, for the rhythm of the shot so you're not snapping the, before the, um, that's a great, I should cover that. When the body, when the, when the torso comes to its maximum height, so as you're bent over and your body is going up, when it comes to the top height, the ball has to be released at that point or it's best right before that. So if you go all the way up, you can't go any higher, and now you shoot, well, that's then it's all arm. Yeah. You're not using the power generated from the flexing of, the, of your legs, of the low back as your body comes up. All that force generated by the torso extending up and going off the floor, that's gone when you shoot at the top of your thing, of, of the jump. So we want that hand snapping at the point where you get to the top. Everything coming together at the right time. And so when, when in a camp situation, we will go, we will stand there and stand up and then shoot. We say, what was wrong? Well, your timing was on off. So if your timing is off, and a good way to fix that, by the way, is to start them higher. So they're just going a short distance. It sounds crazy, but start them higher and then work back to your shooting pocket or to their normal position that you're shooting from. Obviously, that. you can't do that with a third grader because they don't have much strength. They got to bring it all the way down here. But the timing issue, that's a huge thing in shooting. That they're, uh, I see it so many times with girls, they shoot a shot and they're at the top 
and then then they shoot, which is all triceps and then the wrist and oh, it's all arm strength. And then the ball hits the back of the rim a lot. They're flat because they don't have any up force. They lost the up force. They just have an out force generated by the arm, a tiny little muscle, which is the tricep, not that huge bicep. Okay. Not like you have. Okay. So <laughs> it's that little tiny muscle from the tricep. So you want to put all that force generate from your torso, put it with your arm, all that, that timing together. And you do that on the free throw line. You can see that so easily. So coach can just stand there watching his kids shooting free throw. Is their timing off? Are they, are they shooting at the top or they're shooting on the way up? That means you're generating all that force from their body, putting it together with the arm strength. Hope that makes sense. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.